Hi Year 6, my name is Mr O'Connor and I'm the head of the English faculty here at Eskol Ukraine at the table. In the English faculty, our job is to help you to become independent and confident speakers, readers and writers. Skills that you'll use every day for the rest of your life, long after you've left school. In Year 7, you'll study a range of different writers. Old ones, such as William Shakespeare, and ones that you're more familiar with by writers such as Roald Dahl. You also write for a range of different audiences and purposes. But every time we do, we'll use a process that we call the writing cycle, which breaks up the writing process into a series of smaller steps, which we help will make you feel confident to express yourself in new and interesting ways. The first step of the writing cycle is to think carefully about the audience and purpose. The audience is who you're writing for. The purpose is what you're trying to achieve. Next is to pick success criteria. The ingredients that will go in to make your writing successful. Next, we'll look at a waggle. Now a waggle stands for what a good one looks like. So it'll be a good example of a similar piece of writing so that you can see what it is we're asking you to produce. After that, we make a plan. When our plan is complete, we'll start the first draft. We normally stop after two paragraphs and have some self or peer assessment, which means either we or our writing partner will read through what we've done so far. And using our success criteria, Give us feedback on how we're doing so far. At that stage, we'll set some targets and we'll act on those targets when we start the writing process again. That means that we'll have a chance to improve the quality of our writing long before we get to the end. Now, by breaking it down into those smaller steps, we hope that it will make you feel confident and show you that every time we write, you make excellent progress. In the English department, we have four full-time members of staff. There's myself, there's Mrs. Searle, there's Mr. Lum, and Miss Robinson. Now, Miss Robinson is going to tell you all about the work that you'll be doing in the first few weeks when you arrive with us in September. So, Miss Robinson, it's over to you. Thanks, Mr. O'Connor. Hi everyone, my name is Miss Robinson and I'm a member of the English faculty. All staff and pupils at Ascoli Crabbity know I'm a massive Harry Potter fan and that's why I decided to decorate my classroom using a Harry Potter theme. In Year 7, you will have the opportunity to study Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, my favourite book when I was your age. You'll be exploring the setting of the novel, applying the skills that you've learned to a description of your ideal school. In fact, I think I'm going to read you an extract from the Philosopher's Stone now. Harry had never imagined such a strange and splendid place. It was lit by thousands and thousands of candles, which were floating in mid-air over four long tables where the rest of the students were sitting. These tables were laid with glittering golden plates and goblets. At the top of the hall was another long table where the teachers were sitting. Professor McGonagall led the first years up here so that they came to a halt in a line facing the other students with the teachers behind them. The hundreds of faces staring at them looked like pale lanterns in the flickering candlelight. Dotted here and there among the students, the ghosts shone misty and silver. Mainly to avoid all the staring eyes, Harry looked upwards and saw a velvety black ceiling dotted with stars. He heard Hermione whisper, It's bewitched to look like the sky outside. I read about it in Hogwarts history. It was hard to believe there was a ceiling there at all. 
and that the great hall didn't simply open up to the heavens. Harry quickly looked down again as Professor McGonagall silently placed a four-legged stool in front of the first years. On top of the stool, she put a pointed wizard's hat. This hat was patched and frayed and extremely dirty. Aunt Petunia wouldn't have left it in the house. Okay, over to you, Miss Sill. Dear Miss Robinson, my name is Mr. Lum, and when you come to Cardigan School, we're going to be reading Roald Dahl's Boy. Now, we all know and love Roald Dahl's stories. The Fantastic Mr. Fox, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, James and the Giant Peach, but how much do we actually know about the man himself? So, when you get here, we're going to be reading Roald Dahl's autobiography, which is a book he's written all about himself. We're going to be learning about his childhood, we're going to be designing our very own suite, and we're going to be learning about his family. For example, did you know that Roald Dahl's dad, when he was a young man, fell off the roof of his house and they had to have his arm amputated off? Now, that didn't stop Roald Dahl's dad. He was still able to finish that roof, he was able to use a knife and fork just like we do, and he was able to tie his shoelaces with just one hand. So, when you finish this video, I want you to try and see how hard it is to tie your shoelaces with one hand, just like Roald Dahl's dad did. But before that, Mrs. Searle is going to tell you about the next book you'll be studying after Roald Dahl's Boy. I wonder what it could be. Thank you, Mr. Lamb. Hello, everybody. My name's Mrs. Searle, and I teach at the English Faculty. And I want to talk to you about this amazing book called Wonder. We teach this to Year 7 every year and it's absolutely brilliant. It's full of brilliant things to talk about, discuss, it's current. I really want to read you the first part. Ordinary. I know I'm not an ordinary 10 year old kid. I mean sure, I do ordinary things. I eat ice cream, I ride my bike, I play ball, I have an Xbox. Stuff that makes me ordinary. I guess, and I feel ordinary, inside. But I know ordinary kids don't make other ordinary kids run away screaming in playgrounds. I know ordinary kids don't get stared at wherever they go. Isn't it just brilliant? I think you're going to absolutely love it here when you study it. Nice to meet you all. Over to Mr O'Connor. Thanks. Thank you, Mrs Searle. Now, welcome back to Year 6, and I'm going to finish off by telling you about the work that you do in the summer term of Year 7, which is where you'll be studying a Shakespeare play, which is this one here, The Tempest. Now, many people believe this was William Shakespeare's final play, written in about 1611, so well over 400 years ago. Now, it's a play that deals with magic, betrayal, love and forgiveness themes that you will still find written about in many modern works today. So Shakespeare is still relevant and still accessible to everybody. Now the play itself is about an island off the coast of Italy and on that island at the start of the play are four characters. Prospero, who is the ex-Duke of Milan, his daughter Miranda, um, a, a magic sprite called Ariel and a strange goblin-like creature called Caliban. Now, at the start of the play, Prospero conjures up a storm or a tempest, which gives the play its name. Now, that tempest causes a ship to wreck and land upon the island. And on that ship are the people that banished Prospero to the island many years before. Now, you'd be glad to know that the play ends with forgiveness and love, and everybody returns to their homes happier and wiser. Now, during the study of that play, we will look at characters' plot, we will look at his characters, or we'll look at the language he uses, and then we'll finish off by writing um, an essay about the way in which Shakespeare presents one of his characters. Now, 
hopefully you can see that we study a wide range of things in year seven and I hope that there was something there that has caught your interest and I hope that by the end of year seven you will be enthusiastic in your reading, your writing and your speaking. We look forward to seeing you all um, up at the school very shortly and if you have any questions about any aspect of English please contact us at the school. Okay thank you very much for your time year six. Bye bye.